Hello everyone, and welcome back to Redstone 101. I'm your host Val Death, and let's get started with today's lesson number five. Hoppers, droppers, and comparators. These are some simple Minecraft machines in single blocks that can do some very useful things for us. First of all, the hopper recipe, as most people should be familiar with by now, is a chest with a funnel of iron ingots around it in this shape. Look at your hopper. To make the new dropper, it is like this, redstone on the bottom and the remainder surrounded with cobble. Nothing in the middle, that's like the inventory. Finally, the comparator, as we saw in a previous lesson, is made with three stone blocks below, not cobble, but smooth stone, nether quartz, and three redstone torches. This is the most advanced block. We will only really be talking about it briefly as again this episode, um, and it is really the foundation of all the more advanced compact circuits we can make in Minecraft. But we're going to first start with the hopper. You can see I have a hopper down here at the end of a water stream, and its bottom is the output pointing towards this chest. The hopper can capture items and move them into and out of other containers, like chests or other hoppers. So we'll come up here and fire a piece of redstone. Oh, come on now. There you go. Watch it come. Empty chest. Disappears. And there it is in the chest. It gets sucked up in the chest. Things we can throw in the world. If you throw them in their vicinity, they'll get sucked in there. When you place a hopper, you have to actually click on the face of the output you want to target. So in this case, the chest, to place it like this, I had to shift click on the top or shift click on the side. You can see the bottom, how it is targeted its output. Now you can connect many hoppers in a row to move items along chains. This is so we can move items along distances. Let's go ahead and take some, some items here, stick them in empty chest. You can see it's sucking out the items and they're moving along. Have we gotten in here yet? So we should start seeing them in the chest. There they are. Hoppers move items at a rate of 2.5 items every second, which is four redstone ticks, eight game ticks, or 0.4 seconds for every item. That's detail you don't really need to be concerned about right now. But note, it moves items at pretty good pace. Not super fast though. Now, if we apply a redstone signal to a hopper, it will stop it from doing two things, taking in items from its top and outputting items. So in this case, this hopper is deactivated with this signal and the chest on top is still full of redstone. It's neither getting sucked out from the top and there's nothing in here. But if I were to put something in here, it's not going to be shot out the bottom. Now, as soon as I turn off the signal though, there you go, it releases it and starts draining it. Now that's called uh, deactivating the hopper with a signal. Now, when it is deactivated, it still, however, will allow other hoppers to put items into its side faces and remove them from below. Another hopper below can suck it out because this hopper is not deactivated. It's just this one. So the items that are in here, let's go ahead and put a stack, are not getting sucked out because this hopper is deactivated. Whoops. Because it was deactivated. But if I put any items in here, they will make their way down. You can see they're being sucked up by this hopper, being pulled down by this one, and filling our chest down below, even though this is still on. If I turn this off though, 
we'll then go ahead and suck the ones out of the top. Okay. That's kind of the key that you need to realize. Now, next, hoppers can interact with the following inventories. Brewing stands, you can put things in the top or the sides. However, if you have hoppers below the brewing stand, they can pull out potions even if they are unfinished. Be aware of that. You can interact with chests, all types. Well, most trap chests are made with chests, so that's regular chests. Dispensers and droppers. Furnaces, they actually will interact with the various slots in a smart manner. Hoppers on top will feed the top or slot. Right here, what will be burned. Hoppers on the side will fuel the fuel slot, will fill the fuel slot, this one down below. And hoppers below will only take out the finished products from this slot. They can interact with minecarts with hoppers on them. You can place tracks over hoppers. And as this has items in it, currently none down here, as it goes over, it will be emptying. Every time it goes over, look at that. Trap chests, they work the same as regular chests, except uh, trap chests, when you open them, they emit a redstone signal, which deactivates the hopper. So when I have it open, it will not be draining, but as soon as I close it, it will. <laughs> the only inner inventory they cannot interact with are ender chests. It will never pull out this item. Next, let us discuss the dropper. Like the dispenser, it will output an item when it receives a redstone signal. However, it does not fire an item. It merely drops it. So here's a dropper with the cutoff. Fire out an arrow. So you just kind of spits it out. This is a dispenser, as you should be familiar with it. Fires an arrow, which will do damage and hurt mobs or players or whatever and fire charges if there is an inventory in front of a dropper however it will place the item within that inventory we got some redstone boom each pulse there we're popping an item in now, unlike the hopper, which can move items sideways or downwards without a redstone signal, the dropper is the only block that can move items upwards. So here's a dropper facing up into this chest. I'm going to move items from here down into this dropper and up. I already have some redstone in there. When I apply a redstone signal. The only other vanilla option to move items upwards is to use minecarts and send them up rail ramps, which is not so awesome. What we will do, however, is make a simple clock to control the pulsing of the redstone signal to the dropper to move items upwards. We, uh, we don't want to sit here and click and right click everything forever. So here's a simple clock. Two blocks with a repeater pointing into this one with the torch on the side. So there's basically a signal coming out and going around. Right now I have a lever on here applying a signal to deactivate this torch, which is turning it off. And make sure that the repeater here is on two ticks. If it's only on one, the torch will burn out and the circuit will stop working. You need to slow it down just a little bit. So all I have to do to release it is unflick this lever, and there you go. You can see the signal is pulsing on and off, 
any of these blocks, we can take the signal from anywhere. They are all flashing on and off. Now all you just need to do is connect, or actually I was saying, um, this block here is the input block, we'll also use it for the output. So all I have to do is connect this up to a bunch of droppers, and I can move a bunch of items upwards. Each one of these is facing upwards, and I'm just using a torch tower as we've seen before to, in sequence, apply a signal to all of these droppers. So right now the chest is empty. I've got a good number of redstone sitting here waiting. I can go ahead and unlock this hopper to, to fill it some more. And we'll turn on this clock. And it should be moving items upwards into this chest. Look at that. Now, of course I have to have this lever. What if we don't want to have the lever to turn it on or off? Or what if I don't want to have to have it run all the time? What if I want to automate this further? To do so, we need to use a third block, the Mighty Comparator. This block can detect the contents of inventories placed on its input side. Now the uh, input side we're talking about here is the back, the one with the two torches. So just like the repeater, it's got like a little arrow. The single torch is the output side. It also just happens that both sides are inputs as well to the comparator. But in this case, you can see that since we have some redstone in this comparator, it is lighting up and it lighting up this output lamp. If I was to go ahead and remove this, you can see the signal turns off. There is no items in there. Now what really happens is the comparator emits a redstone signal strength of up to 15 blocks depending on the fullness of the inventory it is checking. So as you can see in this case, we're actually emitting a redstone signal of one, two, three, four, five blocks and I have the chest about a third full, just about. But it's not enough to come all the way over here to reach this. Now uh, you can look up all those values online of uh, various inventory contents and signal strengths. So let us go ahead and use a comparator and add it to the previous circuit monitoring the contents of the bottommost dropper. Uh, if we have a chain of droppers again, I just remove them from this so we can see what this looks like. So the droppers or comparator is actually facing outwards from the dropper. And we add a second torch here, which will hold the circuit off by turning off this torch until it gets deactivated by the comparator when an item comes in the dropper. So we want to have it to automatically sense when something comes in here and automatically turn off this torch and allow the clock to tick to remove the item from the dropper. So to demonstrate that we got this chest here with some redstone. Dropper's empty. I'm going to flick this lever to allow it to release and let the redstone in, and that will trigger it. Boom, look at that. Now it's spitting out redstone. One item at a time. And as soon as we stop putting redstone in, it'll stop. Once it's finished all the redstone it had in there. Boom. So, what can we, uh... so ta-da, there you go. I mean, now we, this is fully automated. I love using these things for automated farms. Let's say, imagine you had a line of hoppers here. All these hoppers pointing into this one here, and likewise on this side. And you had a farm of some sort, say a tree farm, and you let all the leaves break into water streams flowing into all these hoppers. All of them will funnel items into the dropper and automatically move it up 
into some chests, like this could be kind of underground under the floorboards, right? Move it up into your output chest automatically for you. You don't have to go and pick stuff up or for any kind of collection for that matter. Now, the comparator will work with many types of inventories just like the hopper. All kinds of chests except ender chests, dispensers and droppers, furnaces, hoppers, brewing stands, cauldrons, it can actually detect how much water is in the cauldron, the fullness of it, a jukebox, does it have a disc in there or not, ender portal frame, likewise, does it have a eye in there or not, and a detector rail with a minecart above it. Is there a minecart on this? Yes or no? How full is it? Etc. Etc. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the comparator outputs varying signal strength based on the fullness of its inventory, and you can look up all those values online. Now, the other really cool thing that we can do uh, with comparators, we saw what comparators and droppers do. We can make a neat uh, item elevator system automatically. What's another really simple, common thing that you can do with comparators and hoppers? Well, automatic sorting systems is what you can do. And here's how you do it. This is a simple cell, and I'm gonna break it down for you right now. Basically, let's say that you had an item pipe made of hoppers, flowing items from left to the right up here. I'll get some more redstone to demonstrate that. Now, we'll have a hopper below that will pull items from this flow and depending on our contents in here. This hopper is gonna be configured to pull out redstone. Now, as you can see, I've also filled its inventory with other items. Now, why have I done that? Well, because earlier we saw that the fact that there's at least one item in here, say the redstone, this comparator is turned on. It is lighting up this piece of redstone, but not this second one. As soon as a 23rd item, or one more item than this, this is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, yep. As soon as a 23rd item comes in there, magic number 23, it will make this signal strength go up to two, which will light up this redstone line, powering this block. Then this repeater will pull the power out of that block and power this block, which will then turn off this redstone torch which is currently deactivating this hopper here. It is stopping this hopper from pulling items out of here. So what will happen? As soon as a redstone comes in, this hopper on top, it'll get sucked out into here because this is saying, I'm, hey, I'm looking for redstone. As soon as there's an extra redstone in here, it will light up, turn off this torch to allow this hopper to suck it out, which will then turn it off. So, we're going to pull one redstone out. So, let's demonstrate that. You can see it turned off real quick and turned back on. And it's sitting right there. Now, we'll need another pulse to do that. So, normally what we'll do is we'll just stick a whole bunch in there. You can see it toggling on and off. I assure you, it's happening. And there you go. It's filling in. No items, no redstone is making it past into here. It's all going in there. Now what if I had something else in here, like say dirt or sand? We'll see very quickly that those things do not come into this chest. They end up in this chest. It only pulls out the redstone because or it'll pull out sticks, <laughs> but you just don't put, you, whatever item you use to fill up the rest of the hopper here, the configuration hopper, you don't put in your system. So I'll never put sticks into my input chest. So we take this one cell, one by one wide cell, flip it around and stack it up. And then we can start sorting multiple items. So let's say this is my input chest. I got sand, redstone, cobble, and dirt. These four are configured to pull out redstone, 
cobble, dirt, sand. And at the end, you have to have a miscellaneous, an overflow. So the items will come here and then go down and then down into this chest here, the miscellaneous. And as you can see, this is just that same circuit duplicated. And remember, when any one of these lights up to a signal strength of two, it will only come down and affect the item that it's concerned about. It will only light up this block. It will not be strength three to light up this one or this one. So likewise, when this goes to two, it'll only light this block, not this one. So let's demonstrate. Right now we got empty chests. And I will turn on this lever, turn it off to deactivate and allow it to pull out items. And you can see redstone, sand's in there, cobbles in there, dirt's flown in there, and nothing. But if I was to put, say, this arrow, it should land in the miscellaneous chest. There it is. And there you go. You just extend this as much as you can with the resources you have, and you can sort as many items as you like. Now, beyond these uses of the comparator, there are many, many, many more. It's probably the most advanced part of redstone in Minecraft. It allows us to have if checks in circuits because it has multiple input faces and only a single output and it can compare the strength of the signals between those two input faces. We have a signal strength of three coming in versus five. Depending on the mode of the comparator, it'll uh, turn on depending on if one is greater than the other. So there's two modes, subtraction and addition, depending on which side is greater. I'm not gonna go into the details right now, some of the other things it can be used for is as a load delay diode. A diode uh, limits the direction of energy flow. So as it's pointing output, I cannot send a signal on the output phase and it won't go this direction. Uh, but there is a difference here from a repeater in using it as a diode from this delay. Uh, but the difference we'll talk about later. We can also use it to make clocks, to make circuits called dampeners, diminishers, sustainers, and they're helpful to make some monostable circuits. We'll talk about some of these things later on, specifically the monostable and more clocks. Needless to say, it's a lot of uses, and we'll see many of them later on, but I hope this time you've gotten some really cool uh, machines that you'll find very useful in your worlds and I hope you now after all these lessons understand exactly how they work and so you can troubleshoot them if you have any problems. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave me some comments, give me a like and I will see you all next time.